So I always look at, you know, different perspectives of things. I just got my John Hall book. And I'll be making some um, commentary about this book. You know, guinea pigs. I ordered the other one. Um, it's actually going to arrive at the end of the month or something for some reason. But this one came, you know. Guinea pigs, technology of control. It's actually supposed to be the better one. It's supposed to explore more of the technologies. I'll be commenting on that. So Dr. John Hall, you know, born in San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo. John Hall is a physician who considered writing his second profession. In the book, he actually, in one of these books, I, I've heard that he actually talks about how, you know, the government is a bunch of, you know, targets Christians and, and conservative Christians and so on and so forth. So I'd like to talk about the Columbine shooters and the Oregon shooter. I did not know that either one of them uh, targeted Christians until I went to Infowars.com. Um, well, not, well, you know, an Infowars video on YouTube. And as soon as I played it, you know, I just started that video actually only two minutes into it and said that. I'm like, huh, so you know me, I'm, I do my due diligence and I check the sources. So I look on, it says Oregon vi victims released range in, eight, uh, range in f age from 1867 Fox News. It said the gunman, witnesses said the gunman specifically targeted Christians. I go down to Washington Post. Oregon shooter said to have singled out Christians for killing. So then I looked up the Columbine, Washington Post again. School shooters targeted Christians is not a new claim. Many people believe that Columbine Christian, excuse me, the Columbine shooters targeted jocks and Christians. So, and I'll, you know, you should see these on the side. I'm gonna take these pictures. I'm gonna leave them up. Mental note. Anyway, so why are these people targeting Christians? And why? how did I know this before I knew this? You know, obviously I would have talked about this before. You all know me, you know. There's, you know, big things like this, if I had known it, I would have spoke on it. You know, what did I put at the top of the list? Satanists. You know, it's funny how some of you, you just don't get it. Satanists are people who hate Christians the most. That is part of their religion. And I made another video, which I'm, I'm going to put after this, you know, it's another clip you're going to see after this, where I talk about the greatest scientific mind, you know, acknowledged by atheists and Christians alike, was... A Christian, Sir Isaac Newton, who believed in the, he didn't um, believe in the divinity of Christ, didn't believe in the Trinity, just like myself. And also, he believed that women distract you and, you know, they keep you from figuring things out. And so, the, he didn't say that, but I'm going to say it. They're, in a way, women tend to be a demonic force. You know, some of the oldest tricks in the books are using women. You know, harlots, Jezebel, and Rahab, and you have the story of Samson and Delilah, and so on. You see, evil women, evil women in the Quran and the in the Hadith. Um, one of the two, Muhammad talks about how women, um, the you know, hell is, is disproportionately female, and so on and so forth. And I truly believe this. I'm not a woman hater. I wish that women would all do the right thing, they'd all come to God, and they would be just as spiritual as men. I have no problem with that. The problem is that's not what you see. But i got to cut this short, really. I just want you all to know beyond any doubt that I am right, okay? It is impossible, it is impossible to claim that you are against the New World Order and to be right if you are a spiritual bottom feeder. That is like saying, oh, I'm against the Nazis, but I believe everything that Hitler fucking is saying, you know? It's like, oh, okay, you might not agree with their violence, but you're, when we, to the line in the sand, you know, as how, who's arguing, you know, about taking, what philosophy should rule the fucking world, or whatever, you're on their side, okay? You're not going to be shedding any tears over the gains made by that side, you're just going to say, well, I wasn't for the violence, but, you know, they did a good thing, you know, by making the world this demonic fucking way. If you're a Satanist, if you're uh, the one of the worst criminals, if you're the LGBT community, if you're a feminist, if you're a, a racist or an atheist, you are on the side of the Satanists. Now, I, don't, I, don't, I think I'm going to have to end it right here, you know, but I just wanted you all to know that these people are under mind control to fund mental health to take away guns and these are mechanisms of control it is a control state it is a police state a population control mind control state okay i'm smarter than all these cowards who are fucking naysayers i'm smarter than all the opposition view i'm a fucking genius compared to these lowly dogs you know so who are you gonna believe the top martial artists 
who fucking lives with his parents has nothing to gain and doesn't get paid a penny to talk about this stuff or a bunch of spiritual bottom feeders who have to keep their job who want to keep their job and get paid and kickbacks and all this they're they're cowards they're idiots they're ignorant fucks i do this every day all day they suck dick and bootlick every day all day thank you and this is about spiritual bottom feeders and their logical fallacies they are incontinent when it comes to the critiques and criticisms of Christians. They are rather clamorous, causing a big ruckus, and they are persistent about saying that Christians are close-minded and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But they fail to mention that the most educated people who were perhaps at odds with the church were also Christians. So why they are trying to be vociferous opponents of Christianity, why they are vehemently denying the truth and the morals of Christianity. I would like to give you one person that proves my point pretty much beyond any doubt. Sir Isaac Newton. There's a lot of points that are proven at the same time. One is that he was a Unitarian. So not only was he a Christian, but he saw things the same way as I do. One of the, what people consider one of the greatest scientific minds of all time, who wrote in 1687 the Principia, considered by many as the best, the greatest scientific book ever written and this person sees it my way about two very key things that are central to my argument things that have never even come close to being disproven but on the contrary they are absolutely correct one is that there is one God and Jesus is not God the Trinity is not true and this is something he devoted more of his time to than math and science combined. Theology and alchemy. He belonged to a quasi-Masonic organization known as the Gentleman's Club of Spalding. He practiced chastity. Now that reminds me of my oath. Now keep in mind, I, I, I've, a lot of this information comes from a documentary that I've double-checked whenever I came to a key point. I believe it was called Newton's Darkest Secrets or something along these lines. I believe it's on the History Channel. But I, all these key points that I'm bringing you, I double-checked. For example, LiveScience.com gave me, you know, confirmed for me that the Principia in 1687 was considered one of the greatest books of science ever written. I thought, it, I thought it was just one guy, you know, I thought it could possibly be someone in the documentary making this claim and, you know, putting too much on it. So I double checked. It's also important to note that he died in 1727, okay? Which is almost 50 years before um, the Declaration of Independence and uh, the Illuminati, May Day, 1776. So 49 years. Very interesting to note the timeline here. The timeline is absolutely relevant. Of course, later on you have the Battle of Waterloo and you have the Rothschilds, okay, and the money, the banking, and, th and them buying up stocks in England for pennies on the dollar. But what was Newton's job after, you know, all the all is said and done pretty much? He was given a job, I believe it was called the Mastery of the Mint, and he was looking for counterfeiters. So what did these Europeans put their greatest mind at the time to do? What did they, what did they have them do? They said, protect our money like the materialistic dogs they are. I mean, Newton just proves my point to a T. And... He was an occultist and an alchemist who reviewed 
Greek mythology, which, for those of you who've been following me for a while, is heavily influenced by African philosophy and Egyptian mythology, which comes from Nubian mythology, almost completely, with a touch of Libyan and, and so on and so forth. And then later on, you get the amalgamation, where you get um, um, these, the Greeks come in and so on and so forth. So why you spiritual bottom feeders think that you're so smart? Oh, these Christians are so ignorant and this, that, and the other thing. Newton thought it was impossible, impossible for the universe to be created in the way that it was, for, for, for things to be the way that they are without an all-powerful God. The greatest scientist of all time, according to many, believed it was impossible for us to have the stars and the world and everything the way it is without God. And he was a Christian. So you sniveling spiritual bottom feeder dogs perhaps should reconsider your political stance, should perhaps reconsider your religious philosophy and lack thereof. With all the Asians, was it an Asian who was the greatest mind? I mean, don't disrespect to Asians. This is a matter of God and logic and Christians having the highest logic and all the other philosophies just completely mortified, dumbfounded, lacking explanation, silenced. What explanation could they have? Certainly, all the other philosophies in the world combined have always outnumbered Christianity. So why do we have the greatest scientist of all time? Not you. Not any of you. Oh, that's right, because your spiritual bottom feeders with less insight, inferior minds, feeble-minded dogs, So, with that being said, I would like an apology from all you atheist dogs who time and time again pretend that you have some sort of superior logic and that Christians are ignorant fucks. All you fucking non-Christian dogs who have been dogging us with your inferior dogma all these years, with your half-truths, you are blind cowards attempting to lead everybody and the blind have quickly followed you and said, he's right, he's right, he's right. But even after all these years, this man died in 1727, almost what? Almost 3,000 years ago, excuse me, 300 years ago. And still, you spiritual bottom feeders have not bested the Principia. You cannot come up with a scientific book that is greater than that. Because you have an inferior philosophy, you have inferior logic, the same reason you cannot debate me, the same reason you cannot prove a single key point wrong, you fucking dogs, you cowards, you liars, you deceitful serpent trash.